Hi, welcome to Key Shop. Today I'm going to talk about doing a uh, safety guard for the wedgie sled for cutting wedges on uh, bowls, uh, segmented bowls. Um, I get a little nervous uh, when the um, wedge stock start and starts to get a little bit narrow with the blade up there that it just feels a little uncomfortable, particularly if the stock gets uh, pretty short there. So I've come up with a, a way to do a, a safety guard on this and also dust collection on this to um, help uh, provide uh, more safe operations both uh, in the air quality as well as safety to keep my, all my fingers here. So stay tuned for the details. First, I would like to acknowledge Jerry Bennett's Wedgie Sled uh, YouTube videos. Uh, you can find it by searching for Segmentology. Uh, they're very informative on how to make the sled and how to use it. And I'm not going to go into uh, details here on this uh, video. Okay, so this is the uh, sled that I made uh, based on Jerry's plans. I did extend the distance between the, um, the two uh, reference uh, angles here a little bit so I can do wider uh, segments or thicker segments if I need to. And I also made a uh, uh, stop um, jig here for uh, adjusting the uh, length of the video or the um, uh, wedges when I cut them. And I did do the uh, the throat insert uh, plate here with the uh, angled uh, cutoff to help force the um, cutoff wedges away from the blade. It works pretty well, but you can see I've added something to the um, to the uh, guard that will hopefully help push them away too. And this is just a sort of a table view look at the sled here on the left. You can see the ramp uh, for the cutoffs here and the um, stop, uh, stop gauge for cutting the lengths of the um, wedges. Now the uh, design goals for this project were to uh, protect my hands from contact with the blade. Um, as long as you're working with long pieces of stock, it's not really a huge issue, although that blade does stick up quite a bit, and you're in fairly close proximity, and just to protect myself, uh, I wanted to um, be able to add a guard for that. I also wanted to add some dust collection capability to, uh, to collect the dust when I'm cutting the wedges. Um, if I didn't do that, it's uh, pretty, pretty messy and get a lot of airborne dust there. I want to easily add and remove the wedgie sled in case I, um, uh, or from the wedgie sled in case I want to add or remove the guard. And I'm using a quarter inch polycarbonate, some leftover from other projects. So this is the uh, sort of the tabletop view of the uh, wedge, wedgie base itself is here with the wedgie fences are here and the locking knobs for those fences are here. It runs on a guide in the table um, a miter gauge uh, slot. This is the tabletop of the saw itself. The throat insert uh, or table insert uh, plate is here with the cutoff ramp uh, attached to that. Then I have my stop with the adjustable sliding bar here. Uh, locking uh, knob here and the length of the wedges is determined between the um, far side of the blade and the adjustable stop. So any kind of guard I make is going to have to come up over the blade, have room for a dust collection port, and also be able to clear the uh, uh, sliding uh, stop bar. And this is uh, what I have come up with. It will have a, um, a mounting plate here, just quarter inch uh, polycarbonate. Everything here is quarter inch polycarbonate except for the dust port PVC um, pipe for that. And it just fastens down with the uh, same uh, knobs that used to uh, fasten the, the uh, fence in place. And then comes up and over. and. Typically, if, if you're not adding the dust port, it can be much lower than this, but in order to clear the, um, uh, to add the dust port to clear the adjustable stop, 
I needed to make it a little bit higher for that and that's what it's going to look like and this is a top view sort of rotated around just to make it a little bigger so we can see it so you can see it it fastens down to the um, uh, wedgie fences here with just the knob I had to make this uh, uh, long enough that it would clear on the knob itself here yet I still wanted it far enough over that there was some clearance between the blade and that first vertical upright piece and you can see from this view it does clear the adjustable stop which is set uh, before the blade uh, on the input side and then has room for my three inch dust port on the output side so I started with this I started with the um, uh, the mounting plate which is roughly one and five eighths wide by sixteen and three quarter inches long and I clamped it down to my um, fences with a three eighths inch clearance and I have a blow up here for that just for the edge of the um, uh, mounting plate to the edge where the blade uh, will contact is about three eighths inch clearance that leaves me about one eighth inch clearance after I attach the vertical um, uh, piece here which is uh, one quarter inch in thickness and once I get it all lined up then I clamped it in place then I drilled the quarter inch um, mounting holes from underneath the table I'd remove the carriage bolts from there when I did this step and drilled it from underneath the next thing I did was in fact you can see the plate here uh, fastened down now with the um, with the knobs I added four upright pieces here to help uh, support the vertical piece the first vertical piece and for attaching the adhesive I bought this through I think it's IPS's website it's um, uh, 16 is the number of the uh, adhesive it's sort of fast setting you need to be fairly quick it says the working times five to six minutes I think that's stretching it a little bit um, fairly fast curing time and then 80% uh, strength in 24 hours and it works pretty well it isn't fully clear as you look through it but I'm not a real expert on working with uh, the polycarbonate this is the same adhesive I used on my um, dust collector cyclone separator that I have other videos on also okay the next step was then to glue the first vertical piece in place and this is roughly four and a half inches tall by sixteen and three quarter inches long and I just put adhesive on the four up upright uh, brackets and the bottom piece and then this uh, vertical piece sits down flat uh, against the um, uh, against the uh, table it's or the the fences itself on the wedgie sled the next thing was to add four vertical supports which are going to be spacers and or separators between the two vertical pieces and I probably could have gotten away with just the two on the ends but I wanted to try to create a little bit of a cavity that's more contained where the cutting action is going so in this case the um, cutting action would be on this fence here or on this fence here so try to get to better control of the dust collection the other thing that's really uh, I think going to be valuable is I extended these down particularly the inner ones down below the uh, level of the um, uh, the uh, first vertical piece that way they can sort of act as a sweeping motion on this back one to move the cutoff wedges out of the way from the blade still may need to add like a uh, I don't know, 45 degree piece on here for better efficiency but we'll see how that goes next thing was I needed to add the dust collection port and I wanted to do that now before I mounted to the second vertical piece and I just used a, a piece of quarter inch um, uh, polycarbonate here that I glued to the uh, um, vertical piece here and then I uh, cut a, a it's actually three and a quarter inch OD 
hole for the three inch sewer and drain pipe uh, piece in here. Now, one thing that I didn't realize at the time was I needed to cut a slot in here on the vertical piece for clearance of the uh, wedgie pieces as they come out through. Didn't think about that. Um, it's easier to do that before you add this piece, but I was able to do it after the fact when I realized the error, and I'll show you that later. So then I glued the the um, second vertical piece right here onto the sled itself, and that vertical piece is roughly five and a quarter by sixteen and three quarter inches long, and just glued it to the um, the four spacer. Um, support pieces here. And before adding the cat piece, I, I just took some coarse sandpaper and made certain everything was level for um, for the uprights and the spacers and everything fit right. They were pretty good, but they needed just a little bit of sanding to get them all level. Then I added the uh, cat, cat piece to it. It's roughly one and three quarters by sixteen and three quarters inch long. And that completes all the um, pieces of the guard itself. Now, here's the gap thing. Hey, <laughs> this is one of the would have been a wedge that I'm cutting, and I went to put it through, <laughs> and it hit the second upright piece. Silly me! I forgot to cut the gap in it. So this was after the fact. I used a um, I think it was a, a half inch uh, brad point bit to cut the corners in to give them a little bit of a radius then I cut them out on my bandsaw so now it's uh, just enough clearance for uh, pushing the, um, uh, the cutoff pieces through. Now one of the things I did was I left the flat washer um, underneath the mounting plate for the um, the, the uh, saw guard to just set it up just a little bit. In fact, you can see that gap right here a little bit, so it's plenty enough clearance for the uh, wedge pieces to come through without being impeded by the guard itself. Um, oh, I cut this this level here. I cut down. It's roughly four and a half inches down from the um, from the top. That is below the uh, mounting cap that I uh, put on the top of the guard. So it should be come down the same distance as the first vertical piece. And again, it's easier to cut that prior to adding this dust port and gluing this vertical piece onto the um, uh, guard itself. The last thing to do was to add an adapter to my three inch sewer and drain. And I've used this technique on a number of other um, dust collection ports from four inches and six inches also, I take a three inch pipe and I cut it down the center with a um, with my bandsaw. Then I actually, in, in this case, it's flexible enough that then I just gap it up and I'm sorry I didn't get a picture of that and insert it inside the three inch piece so it's actually overlapping. Then I mark the place to cut it off cut it off a little proud because you can always take more off but you can't add more on and then once I get a nice tight fit in into the um, the main three inch tube here then I'll go ahead and just use PVC glue to uh, glue that into place this makes it much easier to get the uh, three inch uh, hose over which I just used um, vent hose or dryer hose three inch dryer hose to go over that in fact, you can see it's on here with the uh, um, uh, band clamp to attach it on there. So this is the completed uh, unit itself. Um, I think this is going to be more than enough clearance here now around both the dust port and, a, and the guard to give me the length I need for any wedge length I would need to cut. If I need to cut that a little bit shorter, I can always do that by just cutting off this uh, foot piece here or this um, uh, touch piece here at the end of the uh, saw stop. Then I can actually slide it underneath the uh, guard if I need to. And here's the view of the guard um, from the left side. And here's a piece that I'm getting ready to cut a wedge on for. So plenty of room to get into it easy to take on and off if I want to remove it um, 
and it works great gives me a lot more confidence that I can uh, uh, not have an accident with that blade sticking up on cutting these short pieces also looking down from the top through the top plate you have plenty enough clearance that you can see exactly where the uh, blade is for uh, setting up for your first cuts and it just uh, it's going to work great so in conclusion the unit went together well even though I didn't foresee cutting the gap for the wedges um, was able to do that fine after the fact um, again feel much safer on my fingers on cutting these short pieces um, dust collection is improved I can't say it's a hundred percent I still have a lot of the air going underneath the uh, table saw when I'm cutting this but it's still it, it's getting a, a lot more of that up and I feel much better about that um, the other thing is I did have a vase uh, with a cross uh, vase uh, on the opening page and in case I get questions on that I am working on a video on how I made that and it's uh, pretty slick on that so look for that coming out too thank you so much for your time for watching and I would appreciate a thumbs up if you like this and welcome any comments or suggestions and I hope you found this useful have a great day everybody